All right, so today is another moving day. I got a few things that we're gonna try to do in this video. So one thing is, uh, I towed this uh, vehicle or the trailer with the uh, van down to Kingston. It did quite well. I was pretty underweight actually on the trailer side. I towed it back with the Jeep, and uh, the Jeep doesn't perform as well towing this trailer. It uh, the drawbar gets pushed side to side because the uh, trailer is bigger than the Jeep. But uh, it does okay. I'm probably going to come back with the van to move this thing to Kingston when it's fully loaded. Because it's going to be full of steel. Like I got railway track. That table saw is like 400 pounds on its own. I got lots of things to move here. So I got some logistics track I need to put on the walls in here. Then I got a, a pallet jack. This one's a... Uh, what is it called? Southworth, and it's pretty neat. It's an electric jack, so it's got like a, a deep cycle battery in it. It raises up to 32 inches. So you can use that to uh, lift things up to a pickup truck. Haven't used it at all as of yet, but I uh, was able to get a pretty good deal on this compared to. They're very expensive new. I was surprised how much they cost actually. So I've uh, got that to do. I've got the track to put in. I'm going to make a cardboard floor for the inside of here with some ram board. It's like just a heavy cardboard paper. What do you call it? Craft paper maybe? I'm going to put this uh, stuff on the floor. I've got this from renovating the house. i got tons of it. So everything has to go inside of that trailer. we got a lot of stuff. So it'll be a pretty busy weekend and then uh, we'll see how it progresses here in this video. Alright so to do this job you're going to want a 3 8 uh, bit driver on your impact gun. This one has uh, speed for screw so it'll slow down when it's about to bottom out. You don't have to have that you can do it by feel if you want. One thing you got to do is make sure that the uh, screws aren't too long. I think these are inch and a quarter so kind of expose uh, a piece of your interior of the trailer and just check to see if it's going to go through the material or not. So I don't know if you can tell or not, but I've got probably a sixteenth of an inch before I go out the other side. So that might put a dimple if I go too far. So I'll have to be careful not to overdrive these screws. I'm afraid that may not be in focus by doing what I can here. So uh, I did one test drill here. I didn't sink it all the way yet. Pardon me. All tangled up here. Alright. So what I did was just to see if it would go in the aluminum stud without having to do a pilot drill through the wood and that worked out nice. So one thing is that the light is kind of in the way of the height I wanted. So I'm doing about 48 and a half inches to the uh, screw hole. And the reason for that is that the factory put their screws at 48 inches all along the wall. And I just want to cover up their screws. And the height seems to work for the gas bottles that I've got. I'll have something around 28 inches to the screw on the bottom and 48 to the uh, top of the uh, second row. And then I've got eight pieces of track here. They're rated for 6,000 pounds each, so the rating is no concern. But uh, I kind of put want to put the weight of the uh, load nearer to the axles without having a huge amount of tongue weight. I don't know if this is the correct solution or not, but I'm just going to put eight footers from the door back on both sides and then two rows of that. So I parked my uh, piece here. I don't know if I can get the camera to play nice. Lights get a bit difficult. There you go. So I'm going for right here. And I know that the stud is there based on the way they put this together. That's the problem when you're doing multiple layers. This 
feeling on the outside here, make sure it doesn't go through. So you won't have that problem with the wood where it pulls out, but uh, you will if you got multiple layers of aluminum. I'll pull out the uh, track here, try to mount it, then I'll go to the, try to mount the back side of it. Unfortunate. So this is an eight foot piece and it doesn't quite match the centers. I'll have to show that in a minute at the far end of it. So I'm just going to turn this off and uh, mark the uh, back spot. Okay, so what I'm running into is the uh, to get the 16 inch spacing on the studs, you have to kind of worry about the uh, ends last. So the stud is right here and it's missing the hole and then I don't know if you can see on the end or not but it's missing the end as well. So what I'm thinking of doing is I'm going to do the lap, the ends of the track last and then if I have to I'll use washers just to capture the end here. So I might just need to do it on the front. We'll see in a minute. So I'm just gonna basically disconnect at the beginning and hang it from the second hole that I already had drilled initially and then uh, work from there to make sure that the ends are solid. Alright so I'm going to try to get it into this stud here. I moved it over uh, a little bit. I don't know if the screws are right in the center of the stud or not. So I'm going to get my height here and then start drilling through the wood and I'll know pretty soon if I'm going to get the aluminum stud or not. Yeah, I'm in it. Okay, so I don't want to drive them too hard yet. I'm not sure if I need to use washers. So as you can see, it looks like it's gonna work out pretty good there. I could probably just drill a new hole through the end to make that work. And then at the front, just going over an obstacle here, I'm gonna to have to use a a washer there just to grab the end so it doesn't pull because you're strapping it every 16 inches here. So that worked out pretty good. So obviously I've got to drive a bunch more screws make sure I don't pop out on the outside of the wall as well. I don't see any issues as of yet. Then uh, I guess I'll show you the product here. Then I've got to use a leaf blower and blow out the uh, floor here and then put down the cardboard. Alright, so just uh, doing a hole in the wall for the electrical. Just using a 7 8 spade bit about 2 inches above the uh, track here. And you got to be very careful that you don't pop through and hit the uh, aluminum sheathing. So I'm just kind of... You can see it or not, but I'm just slowly peeling off each lamination here. I just started to get through now. So the wiring is right behind us as well, so another reason to take it easy. Alright, so we got through without any damage. So I'll pull the track back, get these wires up through this hole reattach it to the switch and uh, reattach that switch. I actually leave that on all the time. When the, you turn off the Jeep, it kills the power to the trailer. There's a relay in it. Then on the van, it's got a secondary battery, so I don't need to worry about it too much. But uh, I could come in, and these lights have push buttons in the centers. You can turn them off if you can't reach the switch. Or just disconnect the trailer electrical which is a bit hazardous because you wouldn't want to forget to reconnect it and then not have any brakes. Alright, so I got this uh, track on here now. So this wall is on 16 inch centers, so it took uh, 
14 screws in total to do that, just to keep in mind as uh, you're buying material. Light switch is moved up, not a big deal. I just use a pair of uh, pliers to grab the wire out of the wall and pull it through. Otherwise you can't really get your finger in there to do that. Um, one thing that's got me a bit perplexed is how you would continue on the wall. Because I tried to move this over one screw and uh, I can't get it to work out so you have a butt joint right on the uh, edge here. It ends up being way over here. Like uh, It's just a bit baffling to me. Can't figure it out. So I'll see if I can figure it out for the next side here. And I'm going to be putting uh, another track on here. I can't start in the corner. So I'm going to start at the, uh, the first stud past the corner here. So I'll be back about eight inches. Go as far as I can there. So they always say to load the trailer as much as you can forward. I found that I ended up with uh, a bit too much tongue weight if I use the front piece of the trailer here. So I'm going to try to manage things here so that I don't have too much tongue weight and overload the vehicle because that's sort of what started to happen with the van. I probably had a thousand pounds extra weight on the rear axle. I was lifting up the front axle by 500 pounds roughly. So I can use this, it's about 400 and something pounds. Move it back and forth uh, to manage my tongue weight. I'll have a a weight hitch on here eventually so I can know how much tongue weight I've got just to make things appropriate. So I'll put on the rest of the track here and we'll take a look at how it looks after that. Alright so we got all four of the eight footers up here now so it took just under three bags of screws to do that so that tells you kind of the quantity you're going to need. Then I checked uh, these in a few different locations where there was screws kind of showing in the uh, gaps. So all you do is you pull this tab here, lift up and uh, lock it in. So these are for like sidebars, you can put 2 by 4s across if you want to make a partition or something or if you got something you want to trap that might be moving somehow, you can do that. 2 by 4s are kind of expensive right now. If you haven't been shopping for them lately you will be shocked at the cost. And I got some uh, 8 foot and 12 foot straps here. And then I guess I'm going to load the trailer and see if I need any more of this uh, strapping on the wall or tracking on the wall or not. Because I can do another, take an 8 footer and cut it in half and uh, basically do the last little bit on this side of the trailer here. There would be a gap of like 16 inches between a set of studs, but I think I'm okay with that. I don't think I'm going to need to strap any more to the wall than my toolbox, table saw and a bunch of gas cylinders. So that's about it. Hopefully I don't get pulled over by the uh, MTO or DOT type people because they will not like what I'm hauling inside of here. So anyway, that wraps up that. Here's the, the RAM board getting ready to do that. I'm sure this thing is gonna rip it up a little bit, but uh, that's just uh, the nature of the beast. This move is coming along here. We got most of the uh, bottles in here now. Got the toolbox in and the table saw. Having the uh, high lift pallet jack certainly helped. It would be better if I had a steel plate to put on this to make it more of like a platform because uh, when it's more than about 8 inches off of the ground you can't roll it. So you need to depend on the wheels of whatever you're moving in order to roll. So having a platform would help a lot in my opinion. So uh, now I gotta start packing stuff up into bins inside the shed and start piling it in here and uh, trying to manage the, the weight on the front of the trailer here as well. Alright so the shed just about empty. Got a few things to take out of here. Furniture goes in a different trip. Got to take care of that separately. Most of the building materials are going to the new owner. Then just some odds and ends in here. Got to deal with. So that uh, worked out pretty good. I was able to put this shed in. I think it's a 12 by 16 shed into the trailer, but uh, that's going with me in the Jeep. The Jeep is just isn't up to the, the task though. We got a, a lot of weight in here. So it bottomed out the uh, rear suspension. The 
you look on the other side where the sun is, it's just about lifting up the wheel. So that's not going to work. I tried to put as much uh, heavy stuff in the back as I could. All the railway track is there. There's a bunch of steel. All kinds of heavy stuff. So this uh, trailer is, I think it's 6 foot 6 on the inside. It's got like a 6 inch uh, higher roof in it. I wasn't able to take advantage of. If you had household goods, you could probably fill this thing up to the top. I don't know what the weight is. I'll measure that uh, as I go on the next trip. So I'm going to have to take the Jeep to Kingston, bring the van back to get this. So I'm pretty much using the Jeep as like a shunt truck to move this trailer because it can steer in close quarters and alleyways a lot better. Whereas the van is pretty hard to deal with in a small spots. So anyway, there's a, a ton of stuff in here. It's hard to understand everything that's in here, but pretty much the whole shed and all my outdoor stuff is in here. So I'm just going to get this disconnected and we'll uh, be back to it next week. Okay, so next day getting ready to hit the road here. Just hooking up the trailer now. So it's a 2 and 7, 8, or 2 and 5 sixteenths ball on here. If you go to U-Haul, what I found is that they're uh, Receivers are only good for 7,500 pounds. This one is good for 10,000, but only a thousand pound tongue weight. So uh, there's drawbacks in every receiver that you buy, unfortunately. So I didn't quite line up. This thing is quite heavy, so it's not really going to slide in on its own. It just digs in the jack, so I'm going to have to move the van over and uh, try again. All right, so we'll try this again. Sometimes it's good to have a spotter, depending on how uh, experienced they are in this. I'm just doing this alone. Should get the wood out of the way. We got it this time. There's quite a bit of weight there. We lost uh, a few inches on the height, but. Uh, so then, with this kind of hitch, you just have to pull it forward and down, put a lock through it. You always have to have something through this. It always makes me nervous when I see people that aren't fully coupled. And you can spin your chains around to make them fit the right length. Cross your chains, obviously. For the electric brake, you just pull it out and uh, loop it through. Could loop it through on, uh, shall loop it through over here, that's what I did before. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I've got two receivers on this van. One for the spare. So you just loop it through here. Put it back in. This receiver is handy where it's located, but it can be hard to get a good connection. So the best way to find out if you got a good connection is just to go and take a look at the brake controller. And it'll tell you if you're connected or not. And uh, you have to take a word for it, but it, it says C on it right now. Instead of two dots, they're not connected. Then you can pull the brake. So again, I have seven amps right there by pulling on the lever. So then you know you're uh, hooked up. You just check your lights, obviously. Then I'm gonna move the vehicle out of the way here. All right, so we're uh, a ways into our trip now here with uh, the trailer on with all my equipment from the uh, shed. So let's see how far we've gone. I've noticed that the uh, 
It sits on a thermostat for the most part, but when you're pulling from a light, it'll go up to 210. It goes up one tick if you're taking it easy. If you were to really get on it to speed up, it would cost you some more uh, temperature, but we're pretty heavy, as you're going to see in a minute. So we're 141 miles. I think I did about 120 miles, so 200 kilometers on the trip. And we've burned a, a half a tank, whatever that is when we go to fill it up. So I'd be driving at 100 kilometers an hour, which is like 62. And that's uh, about all this van can handle. We are like right at the legal limit, as it turns out. So you can see we add up 3540 with 6040. That's just under, that's 20 pounds under 9600. So that's just barely legal on the van. And then 6760. And I got 3500 pound axles on the trailer. So I'm just uh, barely legal there. And then I'm illegal on the overall weight, which isn't really a, a legal kind of thing, but it, the gross combined vehicle weight on this combination is supposed to be 16,000 pounds, is what uh, they say from Chevrolet. So we're 340 over, and we've got like tons of stuff in here. We've got garbage, there's just tons of stuff in here. You're not really supposed to load up your towing vehicle. So I know my tongue weight is getting too high. It has broken, thank God. My hubs aren't spewing anything. That's another positive. But when I take a turn inside town, I leave a black streak behind me. My tires are scrubbing a bit. That is. It. I guess I am dragging my chain a little bit. I'll have to tighten up that one. It's a bit low. Anyway, I guess that's pretty much it. I got another uh, hour and a half to drive. Then I'm going to hook it up to the Jeep and shunt it across town to park it and unload it. So, thank you for watching.